You determine what your system flow requirements are, your min, your max, your average, even factoring in, to maybe a lesser extent, the daily minimum that you'll see there. And then you have to look at your pressure, whether it's constant or varying, and how much that variation is. Then you have to look at the site conditions, your elevation, which impacts the density of the air and the ambient range, as well as the control requirements, whether it's on off, whether it's on a VFD drive, that sort of thing. Let's look at a comparison of the three technologies. And let's look at the efficiency comparison between them. The first example here compares standard PD blower along with turbo blower and our hybrid blower, which is Arizon's version of a screw compressor, along a particular flow range at a particular pressure and given set of ambient conditions. In this particular example, there's a big advantage, big performance advantage over the PD, primarily because it's at a higher pressure. The hybrid is actually comparable in performance to the turbo. And even though the standard PD blower has that turndown range that I spoke about before, you can run into temperature issues at low flow. Here's a diagram that shows the discharge temperature of a standard PD blower and our hybrid, again, at a given set of conditions. This is a high pressure condition here. The red line on this diagram is the maximum allowable temperature for that blower, beyond which you start to damage the blower. And as the flow slows down, the temperature, the discharge temperature, actually increases. For the standard PD blower, it actually hits that maximum temperature before it reaches the rotational limit for the, for the machine. And what that does is that limits your turndown. Whereas the hybrid, because it's running more efficient, never even gets close to that. The next curve is another set of comparison between the three technologies. And as you can see, at the design point, the hybrid and the turbo are pretty close. So if all you were doing was a design point analysis, it might be a toss-up and then you'd start to look at cost considerations, installation, maintenance, footprint, that sort of thing. But if you went beyond just the design point and started to look into the turndown range, you would see that the hybrid is actually much more efficient in the lower ranges than either the turbo or the standard PD blower. In this example, the hybrid and the turbo pretty much neck and neck, comparable efficiency throughout the entire range. However, if the system calls for a greater level of turndown, the hybrid may be a better choice. If the system is going to run within the range where both of those blowers lie, then the turbo may be a better choice. Here's one more example where it's pretty much a toss-up between the two. You can see that there's a break-even point between the turbo and the hybrid. So what do you do? You do what they call a sensitivity analysis. And by sensitivity analysis, I mean you take the curve, determine how often the system requires different flows within that range. You assign a percentage of time, determine what the total power required is, and annualize it and add it up. And that will help in your decision. Putting aside the economics for a second, let's look at some of the system characteristics that would also help determine what the best technology would be. One of those characteristics is pressure variation. Now, either of the two PD technologies would be appropriate for a system where you would have a major fluctuation in pressures because all you really need is enough motor horsepower to overcome the higher pressure, which is L2 on this diagram here. However, if you were using a turbo technology, you would have to make sure that the high level, which corresponds to that high pressure, and the low level that corresponds to the low pressure both reside on the performance map. Otherwise, you would run into troubles. Site conditions. Site conditions matter because the oxygen content, especially in aeration systems, will vary depending on what your ambient conditions are. This diagram shows Miami versus Denver, which is a pretty clear-cut example. And that determines what the ICFM versus the SCFM impact will be. And the higher elevations will impact the compression ratio of whatever technology that you choose. I mean, 
Also have to determine what your maximum flow is going to be on your hottest day, or what I like to call the perfect storm design, and the minimum flow on the coldest nights, which are probably more likely in northern climates. This all comes down to right sizing. You have to make sure that you have the proper number of machines to satisfy maximum demand on the hottest day and the minimum demand on the coldest day. Some of those options might be to have one 100% unit per system with a common spare, something to cover the base load and the upper flow range, or two 50% units with a common spare. Or, further than that, a base load machine with a swing machine, which could incorporate mixed technologies and you could get optimized efficiency throughout the entire range. But what it comes down to with your final decision is an accurate energy cost evaluation, accurate life cycle costs, not just design point costs, proven technology, serviceability, and the accountability of the manufacturer. And I'll leave you with this. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't drink my Kool-Aid. Do your own evaluation in the manner that makes the most sense for you. We're there to help you. Give us a call. Go to our website, www.airzenusa.com. This is Tom McCurdy for Airzen USA.